very much. Um, actually, not an independent analyst. Um, if I can do a, a one minute plug, or not even less than that, I'm actually CEO of Metals Daily. We provide the world's largest and fastest source of information on precious metals, and it's free. Advert over. <laughs> um, there's a fair bit of overlap in terms of what I'll be saying in relation to what Alain was just saying just now, in terms of the market, where it is, where it's going. No question, gold's had some phenomenal headwinds this year, and um, I'll be drawing up what some of those are. And when we spot where the problems have been for gold this year, it allows us to pick out where the likely wins are to come later, what we need to focus on. Um, and that will be the, the broad uh, concept of what we're seeking to do. Year to date, gold is down 5.5%, so double that. Um, it seems to be mired in a trading range. Um, there's a very important level um, up at 1835, a quadruple top. A breach of that will see us uh, get, see it game on, um, but we, um, we're struggling to get momentum at the moment. Um, I won't be discussing to any great extent the supply demand fundamentals for gold, but for those that do want to look at it, um, the World Gold Council have just published this week um, their third quarter uh, gold demand trends. So if you're looking at supply, supply demand fundamentals, if anyone would like a copy of that, I can point them towards it on their website. So what do we know about gold here today? Well, as I say, it's not been a great outlook. If we compare it to the broad commodity index, the, the, the Bloomberg commodity index, well, that's up 51%, uh, gold down 5%, as I pointed out there. Any number of commodities within that are up triple digit numbers. Um, I hear this morning wheat is up at record highs, um, copper, you name it. Uh, gold, or indeed precious metals, seem to have missed the party. Bitcoin, um, the pretender to the throne, uh, up 358% year to date. It's kind of hard to ignore those sort of numbers when you add that onto the gold and commodity story. And if you want to look over five years, well, it gets even more embarrassing, doesn't it? Because you're now up at 26,493%. It takes some explaining. Um, some would suggest that um, uh, Bitcoin is the new digital gold and gold is the analog solution to a digital world. Uh, I, I, I disagree. They have different roles in, in relation to their uh, functions as money. Gold still has its uh, uh, store of value uh, it, that it can claim. To Bitcoin support, if you like, when it does have utility, when it can be used as money, that, will, that could be a game changer for Bitcoin. I don't think it will affect gold in any significant way. There is an area though um, where I do think that Bitcoin does compete with gold, uh, and that's for headlines. Uh, the gold market's not a big market. Look around you. you know, Were well, this in China? Yes, it'll be a bit bigger, but we're a relatively small market. Um, and we do rely on the oxygen of headlines to get reported and to get coverage. Gold does very well when it does well because it's written about and does well when it does badly because it's written about. So to some extent, um, to a large extent, sorry, Bitcoin has stolen no our headlines. Um, I spoke to a journalist the other day and I said, if you wrote a Bitcoin story and a gold story, what's the ratio? And he went, hmm, somewhere between five and 10 to one in Bitcoin's favor. That's a problem, that's a problem for us. We'll stick with crypto because I know it came up as a question. Um, is there a correlation between the two? Yeah, some. Correlation and causation, of course, are linked. It's a, it's a fairly mild picture there. You can see periods of time where they operate in parallel and times where they seem to operate separately. Now, this chart was um, stolen from Martin Murenbuild, a fantastic Canadian researcher. And he disaggregated the crypto moves and the gold moves, and he said that. From what we can assess, um, a 30% move up in Bitcoin takes about 1% out of the gold price. In other words, this year to date, gold's off about $60 lower than it should be because of Bitcoin. So on the fringe, absolutely, there is a little bit of, of, of cannibalization that's going on. Um, I won't dwell on this uh, because I know Elaine has just covered this very extensively in terms of issues, inflation, uh, three decade highs, and it looks as if we, as Ellen also says, we're going from transitory to, to rather sticky. I won't dwell on this because I know it's been covered rather more, more extensively earlier. Another issue that gold books should be constant of is the Schiller or the CAPE index, the cyclically, cyclically adjusted price earnings index, which is adjusted for inflation. Uh, equities, the, the equity indexes themselves are what might be described as nosebleed levels. Um, and for any gold bug, 
it's very hard to pick when the market's going to turn. All you need to know is, is the rest of the market vulnerable? And I think the short answer is absolutely. Uh, and again, we've, we've heard earlier talk discussions about global jet to GDP levels, um, at levels where is it mathematically impossible to pay down? Possibly. We're getting to those sort of numbers, aren't we? North of 100% in the States, etc. Equities are showing the same story. Markets out there are vulnerable. Gold is not yet responding. There's a chart you saw a little, a little earlier. Let's uh, see that the, um, the dollar, in, the dollar um, Y curve has been inverted there. You can see the correlation there uh, between gold and the US dollar. Interesting looking at the top column there. Minus 0.63. If it was minus 0.1, it would be perfectly uh, inversely correlated. Uh, in the last 22 days, it's actually up at minus 0.8, so that correlation has tightened a fair bit. Basis, what you're looking at there, gold is only marginally um, undervalued against that. However, the other driver, which you also looked at, is US 10 year, 10 -year treasuries. Uh, and the 22 day average on that is currently 0.78%. Uh, minus 0.78%, so it's just showing some correlation. What it suggests is that gold has, has broken away from its very, very strong correlation with, inverse correlation with US Treasuries. Um, uh, but were that to have held, well, gold would be back at close to its all time highs that it saw back in August last year, just north of 2000. Another reason why, excuse me if you like, um, why gold is struggling is legacy issues. Unlike many other assets, you know, we've got an accumulated 200,000 tons of gold produced throughout history. Um, and like it or not, that comes back to the market in the form of scrap. Um, it also is, um, uh, and you'll see it here, note that the Y code again is, 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 is not rhythmic. Gold tends to do this. When it moves ahead very strong and hits record highs, it tends to correct for a period of time. Why? Well, expressed simply, it's very popular in, in parts of the world which are deeply price sensitive, in particular China and India. When the market rise to an all-time high, they stop buying, just what we've been seeing uh, just pre-COVID. Uh, pre um, the Chinese market is beginning to pick up, currently it's trading at about a, a $4, uh, four dollar premium over, over London, like a London spot. Uh, the Indian market is still slightly mired, of course. Um, we're now in Diwali, so we'll see how that plays out. So there are legacy issues attached to gold with all this accumulated metal that will tend to come back to the market, and we're seeing it now. We're seeing the Indian and Chinese market beginning to play catch up after these record highs in their local currencies and dollar terms, um, and they're beginning to get used to these new levels, and the market is now beginning to see good strength from that, from that sector. The big takeaway from the World Gold Council report, I think, um, it's reflected here, is ETF demand, institutional demand. They don't want it. Um, where gold is particularly strong is amongst people much like ourselves in this room. Reasonably wealthy, educated, economically literate individuals. Physical coins and bars are going off the scale. Premiums are going through the roof. Sadly, gold is standing on largely one leg, and it's that physical demand which is holding it up. But the bigger market, the institutional market, doesn't want to play. Central bank market demand, somewhere in the middle, uh, beginning to pick up. You can see there, um, down on the bottom left, there's the button on that, I'll find it. Down, oops, going forward. Down the bottom here, you'll see that last year, the offtake was 742 tonnes. This year, to date, net redemptions of 270 tonnes. So that's a swing, a swing of about 1,000 tonnes on a market that only produces about 3,000 tonnes. Um, if we narrow down to that ETF selling a little further, you'll see it there from chart here from Senex. The red line being the gold price and the yellow line being the redemptions in the gold ETFs. You can see earlier in the year we saw some massive selling that took place and it continues. Yesterday 2.8 tonnes, the day before that 6 tonnes, the day before that 1 tonne. You know, there's a constant drip, drip, drip of, of selling by major institutions. For me, the biggest story of the year to date is BlackRock's uh, announcement that it was um, scaling back significantly to close to zero its positions in gold ETFs. PIMCO, gold's lost a lot of friends institutionally. You have to be aware of these things. Not always, it's not all a great story. The good news on the other hand is it seems to be, it seems to be slowing up a little. Um, is gold going to turn? Well, that's where you're, you're going to have to look, is watch the ETF flows. When that starts to turn positive, when inflation looks to become rather more entrenched, 
Um, when the Federal Reserve delays interest rate rises, you may well start to see those institutional flows starting to come back, and I think that will give us the indicator. That's what we're watching to see that gold's doing what it should do. Um, this chart was taken from a report by uh, PIMCO, uh, and again, it positions amongst institutions where gold is, and for them, it's top of the left hand corner. It's a high, high inflationary environment and a low growth, basically stagflation. And you can see the beta they attach to in terms of the scaling uh, of, 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 of the um, investment in gold and what they would expect it to do. Currently, they don't see it as, as, as something that they want to throw themselves behind. In, in order to decide what you, uh, to be in gold and the outlook for the price, there is no question that the market to some extent is haunted by the 2013 taper tantrum when gold lost over the next three years about a third of its value. And I think it's this rather aggressive narrative of the US Federal Reserve, not actions but words, that have suppressed the gold price. It's, it's, it's taken out the desire amongst institu major institutions. But for the reasons that you've already heard, despite those tailwinds, there are uh, headwinds, there are some tailwinds attached to gold, not least of all debt. Um, and some of the issues, again, that Alain has mentioned there. So in conclusion, um, where, where do we see gold going? Well, back to record highs, almost certainly, but not in a hurry. Um, it's those institutional flows that you'll need to watch out for that will bring us back to those levels. The decision of the FOMC late this afternoon will be pivotal in gold's price action from here. Um, it's no longer a time for words, it's a time for action. And if they don't announce, um, a significant reduction in the, in, the, in the spend, 15 billion per month anticipated, then I think gold will, will rise quite rapidly. And indeed, we'll be looking out for any indications whether we can expect interest rate rises uh, middle of next year. So in short, we think positive, but in the, in, the, in the short term, gold will remain under pressure because of institutional flows. Thank you.